This is Father Bob Warren of the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement. Thank you for listening to this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour radio show. The Friars' popular Ave Maria Hour was first brought to the radio airwaves in 1939, recorded in New York City and on the mountainside grounds at Graymore, a home in Garrison, New York. These timeless classic stories of the Bible and the lives of the saints came to life each week through dramatic reenactment by professional actors and actresses. You know, friends, Christ once said, Do not hide your treasure under a bushel. In saying this, he meant share your gifts, share your talents. The Friars of the Atonement feel the message in these broadcasts remains as powerful and timely as when they were originally aired, and we are so happy to be able to share them with you today. To learn more about the missions and ministries of the Friars of the Atonement, I invite you to visit our website, www.atonementfriars.org. In the meantime, sit back and enjoy this rebroadcast of the Ave Maria Hour. Adele Quinn, Envoy of the Legion of Mary. It was by chance that I learned of the death of Idel Quinn. More than 20 years had passed away. In all that time, the memory of Idel Quinn has not left me. I owe her innumerable graces for myself and for my family. And I thank her daily for it in my prayers. Ah, then you knew her well? Mm, yes, Father. Uh, well, uh, no, I didn't. I don't understand. Oh, I knew the frail, smiling girl that came to work for me when I was manager of the shiny tile works in Dublin. But I don't think I or anyone else realized that deep inner light she kept entirely to herself. As if it were a precious secret between her and, and well, some angelic presence. The divine Mother Mary, no doubt? Mm, we know that now that she's dead. There are many who felt it while she was among them. Yes, and I should have realized it more fully. That day in Dublin when I asked her to have lunch with me. Would you care to tell me about it? Well, I don't know whether she would want it known. The Legion of Mary is compiling material for her biography. Anything which would throw light on her character. Well, yes. Yes, the world should know her. As I mentioned, I was manager for this French company doing business in Ireland. Edel was hired as secretary but made rapid advancement. In 1927, business was slack, and I decided to leave Ireland. I returned to France and transferred my business to another firm, which made Edel the manager. There were a few details to attend to, so I returned to Dublin. It didn't take long to settle the business arrangements, and when that was done, I took Edel to lunch in a quiet little restaurant. Remember when you left Dublin, Pierre? You told me you planned to walk across County Kerry all the way from Killarney to the sea. Now, did you do that? I did. One day, I tramped 20 miles to Partners Hill. What did you? Uh, but too late to find a meal. So, dead tired and hungry, I went to bed. And then, on awakening in the morning, it came to me. And what was it that came to you? That I was in love with a girl called Edel Quinn. And that I would ask her to marry. Oh, Pierre... What's wrong with you? Uh, are you ill? No. No, Pierre. I'm all right. But I saw a look of pain in your eyes and on your face. It was not my own pain, but that which I felt for you, Pierre. Does it hurt to hear that I love you? That I want you to be my wife? Let it ever be a dream, Pierre. For I can never return your love. In the way you wish love to be returned. But why, Ida? I've made a solemn promise to another. To another? Yes, Pierre. I've promised myself to God. Oh, no, no, Adelia, you're so young and frail. Well, the hard life in the convent will kill you. I decided long ago to become a poor place. 
I'll enter their convent in Belfast. I never dreamed that you wanted a religious life. I had to work to help my parents. Soon, that need will end. Is there nothing I can say to make you change your mind? No, Pierre. I feel so certain I'm doing what God wants of me. That sounds presumptuous, I know, when one considers the calling. But suppose you're mistaken, and then cling to it, refusing to admit that you've made The call to the religious life is grace from God. And when one receives it, there's no mistake in it. I need only to look at you, to know that if I speak further, I'll only cause you pain. You'll let it be a dream, and a beautiful dream it was. You'll be leaving Dublin soon? On the first boat. You'll try to understand and to forgive my receipt. Perhaps in time I shall. But one thing I know, I'll never forget you. And I'll ask Our Lady to look after you and to do what's best for you. Will you write to me, Pierre? Yes, I'll write. And I'll answer promptly until I go into the convent. Then, of course, correspondence will be forbidden. We exchanged 50 letters. But as I moved from country to country, they became less frequent and then ceased. I assumed she had entered the convent and was living a life of contemplation and prayer. Eventually, I married. And when our third baby was born, I told my wife about her death and asked her to agree to name the baby after her. I mentioned this in a letter to a friend of mine in Dublin and then learned that Adele had died in Africa. What happened, Father? A great deal. Who knows? Perhaps a modern miracle. And all because a slip of a girl joined the Legion of Mary. The Legion of Mary? It was while waiting until she could make arrangements to enter the poor Claire's convent she discovered it. Uh, But what is the Legion of Mary? It's an organization for the laity who go out among the people, like the apostles of primitive days, to win souls to God and to lead those who have wandered back to God. Hmm. It was formed one night in Dublin in 1921. Strange I'd not heard of it. The legionnaires, as they're called, work quietly and don't seek publicity. They believe in action. Hmm. That reminds me of what Adele wrote in one of her letters. An idealist who doesn't try to put his ideals into practice is not worth much. Hmm. That's typical of her. You can see how she'd be drawn to the legion. It was Frank Duff, one of the founders, who said that the whole world could be converted... If every Catholic would become an apostle devoted to Mary's universal mediation. But what in the world was a girl like Adele doing in Africa? I'll come to that soon. I was spiritual advisor for one of the branches of the Legion. One evening, I noticed a new face at our gathering. It was Adele. Yes. And at the end of it, she asked to be allowed to become a member. Well, I tried to discourage her. She didn't look as if she had the strength for the work. My name is Isel Quinn. I'd like to become a member of the Legion of Mary. You heard the men and the women report here tonight? Oh, yes, Father. You'll have to deal with sordidness and people who are not very attractive. Wherever Our Lady directs, I'll go willingly. But can you find the time? The Legion requires a minimum of two hours a week. I'll find the time. Frankly, Miss Quinn, we would rather not start with anyone who cannot endure Try me, Father. And of course you did. Oh, yes. She won me over. And I knew she would win others. From the day she started, she spent five nights a week for the Legion. She was the same at the office I managed. She never let anything personal interfere with her work. After serving in the ranks as an ordinary active member, she was made president of a branch called Our Lady Refuge of Sinners. This group was devoted to the rescue of wayward girls. But, Father, she couldn't have been much more than uh, 20 at the time. 22. Headquarters heard about that. They were taken over the coals for sending anyone so young. But after two or three meetings, they agreed the choice was a good one. I was there the night a girl missed an appointment with another girl assigned to make a visitation in the worst district of Dublin. <laughs> It's 
as you know, an iron rule that visitations must be made in pairs. A legion appointment must be regarded as an appointment with Our Lady to do a certain work with her. An appointment missed is a lost opportunity. It might mean getting at least one woman to mass and so preventing one mortal sin. How can we ever know how much good follows from a single act of virtue? Good as well as evil can lead to an infinity of consequences. Our Lady needs our help and we must cooperate with her in the saving of souls. You may be sure that few appointments were ever missed after that. Adele was tireless in her work, and for it she paid a great price. In her activity, she never lost sight of her goal, the poor Claire's. I remember the day she came to me with some distressing news. Father? Yes? You asked me to tell you what the doctor said. What is it? I, I hope it's nothing. Father, I shall never be able to enter a religious order. Tell me at once, what's wrong? I'm in an advanced stage of tuberculosis. The doctor says I must have complete rest in a sanatorium. God's mercy be on us. My child, I feel responsible. We let you work oh, too hard. Father, no. It can only be God's will. Perhaps the Divine Mother has some other use for me. I, I'd i like at this time to say, I would like you to know, Adele, God bless you. It must have been about that time she was writing to me that she had delayed going into the convent because she was still needed at home. As soon the letter stopped. Don't you see? She, she didn't want to revive your hopes. And her illness, which she knew was incurable, would have driven any thought of marriage from her mind. Ah, yes. I, I can see that now. She went into a sanatorium. That was in February 1932. She stayed 18 months and then came home on the promise to her doctors that she would take things easy. Well, she did for a few months. But there was no improvement in her health. Since the doctor could do nothing for her, she decided to go on her way without them. She, uh, didn't want to be a burden to her family, so she took a secretarial position at Callow's, a motor engineering firm in Westerland Row. With her lungs gone and in all those fumes of petrol? Oh, her doctor protested. So did everyone else. But she had the same answer. Everything's all right. And all this time she was busy with her Legion of Mary activity? Oh, yes. If she was tired, we never knew it. Her soul seemed to control her body by sheer force. The Legion was expanding beyond the seas to Scotland and England. We found it necessary to formulate principles and to define its methods. In 1928, we had published the handbook which laid down the rules of the Legion. One afternoon, Adele walked into the central office and in her usual manner came straight to the point. Miss Hawk, I'd like to go to England, settle in Chester, and with that as the center, work to plant the Legion everywhere. It dear, you can't mean it. Have you any idea of what you're asking? I'm aware it means voluntary exile, unknown surroundings, parting from friends, leaving my family, and finding work. You seem to have anticipated most of the objections, Adele. I've weighed them all, Father. And I know, too, that the harvest is waiting for laborers. So I beg of you, let me go. But what do you know of the country, Adele? Chester is an important railway center, making access easy to the surrounding country. And it's the most likely place to find work. And what if there are risks? The winnings will be worth it. So what do you say? Adele, give us a little time to think it over. Of course, Miss Hogg. But you'll let me know as soon as you can, won't you? We thought the matter over and had decided to sanction Adele's mission to England when an important letter arrived at headquarters and set us thinking in another direction. And we called Adele to the office. Oh, at last you've called me, Miss Hogue. I do hope you've decided to send me to England. Uh, sit down, Adele. You've asked us for Chester. What would you say if instead we asked you to go to South Africa as envoy of the Legion? I'll go. With all my heart. A letter has come from Miss Dennison in Rhodesia, begging for an assistant. When can I leave? Oh, 
But, Father, how could you possibly send Adele to South Africa? Well, I talked to her doctor, and he said the damp climate of Ireland would kill her inside of a year. Rhodesia might give her a few more years of life. We had agreed to put a request to the Concilium, or that's the highest council of the Legion, when we found that there had to be a change of plans. We called her in again. Adele, word has come that the proposed itinerary of you going to Alexandria and working south to Rhodesia will be impracticable. Then why not sail direct to South Africa? In the meantime, requests have poured in from Central Africa for an envoy to start the Legion of Mary. Then send me to Central Africa. It's much better. Miss Dennison has the work started in South Africa. Well, we've considered it carefully. We know how important it is to start off with a qualified person from the beginning. But there's the question of your health. The doctors have given me a year to live in Irish climate. I'd have a 50-50 chance in Africa. Don't delay any longer. Send me. Very well. We'll recommend it to the council. And oh, thank you. Thanks, Father. This is the happiest day of But you dare. Wait. Wait. It's not settled. We'd have to get permission of the council. Oh, Father, what can I do with her? Suppose the council objects. Oh, they'll object. <laughs> but they don't know Adele. We can't possibly send this young girl to Africa. The hardships, the heat, the poor transportation. If someone must be sent, and I agree that's necessary, then send a man, and one of more than average strength. Let's not tempt God by sending a frail woman. Reverend Father, all the difficulties you mention have been explained in detail. I know what's before me, and it's exactly what I'm looking for. I go with eyes open. I don't want to go on any picnic. Picnic? Picnic, indeed. You might become a picnic for some of the people you'll meet out there. <laughs> I call on you to witness the picnic would not be very substantial. I, uh, I think the way to settle this is by vote. Does anyone here oppose Adele's mission to Central Africa? Show of hands, please. <clears throat> well, since I'm a minority of one, I'll make it unanimous. <laughs> The meeting took place on Sunday. The following Tuesday, Adele walked into a branch where Dr. McGuinness was a spiritual director. Without a word, went to him and fell on her knee. Reverend Father, I came to beg your pardon for my levity and for interrupting you on Sunday. My child, please get up. It's I who should apologize to you. Go to your mission, Adele. God himself summons you to it. He'll look after you. As for myself, I'll pray for you in my Mass every day of my life. Farewells were said, and she sailed into the Irish Sea on the Llangavy Castle, Friday, October 30th. 1936. And on the 23rd of November, the ship entered the harbor of Mombasa on the African East Coast. Originally, that was where she was to start her work. But by the time she arrived, the plans had been changed and we decided to send her inland to Nairobi, the capital of Kenya. By four o'clock the same day of her arrival, she was on the train and arrived at 10.30 the next morning in an atmosphere heavy with pessimism. Remember, Miss Quinn, this is not Dublin, Ireland. Frankly, I think your cause is hopeless. Many races live in this area, and they have their own ways. Some of them are still primitive and pagan. I think your best chance for success, if any, is to recruit your legionnaires from among the leading Catholics who are already members of Catholic associations. But the legion is for everyone. If I start with the upper classes... I might cut out the ordinary people. Well, you don't know Nairobi. It's a point of honor with the Legion to recruit its members in all the social grades and to make the appeal to all men of goodwill. 
I wish to make a practical demonstration at the very start. You mean to have the white people sit down with the black? Don't you know there's segregation here? There's no segregation in the Legion. Well, it's impossible to include Africans with Europeans. To try to bring mixed races together is to, to invite failure. I did not come to Africa to fail. You leave things as they are, Miss Quinn. You don't know Nairobi. No, I don't know Nairobi yet. But I know the Blessed Mother of Christ. And her compassion is for all mankind. <laughs> Adele didn't attempt to win the summit at a single leap, but took one step at a time. The diversity of language made it impossible for the different races to be brought together in the Presidium. That's the meeting at the lowest level. But she was sure she could get unity in the Curia, the governing body of a district. In order not to offend feelings by addressing one group before another... Adele announced she would give a talk on the Legion of Mary and had it posted in all the various churches in Nairobi. A few people responded, perhaps from curiosity. The Legion of Mary is an organization inspired by the divine compassion of the Mother of Christ to save the souls of all mankind. <laughs> I have outlined our purpose. I have explained the handbook which covers the rules and methods of our apostolate. Now I call for volunteers for a first group. Please raise your hand, any who will volunteer for a first group of Our Lady in Central Africa. Look at her, her arms outstretched, in welcome to those who love her holy son. One... God bless you. Two, three, four. Blessed be your hands that are raised. Five, six, seven. of the Legion in Kenya was organized. Within a week, more people volunteered and another was started. And two weeks later, the first Presidium of Africans was founded when 13 men and three women expressed their desire to join. Well, that was just the beginning. Less than ten years later, there were... 60 parish presidia, 750 active members, and 5,000 auxiliaries. And the same story is recorded wherever she went. <laughs> and she covered most of Central Africa. A Celtic cross in a Nairobi cemetery tells the story of her sacrifice. She was a dying woman when she arrived. And in a few years, she was down to 75 pounds. Another few years, she was dust. She died May 12th, 1944, with but a single word on her lips. It was Jesus. The Legion in Dublin was kind enough to send me a photograph of the grave and the inscription on the stone. She fulfilled this mission with such devotion and courage as to stir every heart and to leave the Legion of Mary and Africa itself forever in her debt. The Holy Father himself has paid tribute to her great services to the church. <laughs>